Hello y'all, and welcome back to another chapter review. This time, I missed the chapter 1088 review, so I'll quickly run through that chapter and then jump into 1089. It starts off with a flashback of Garp saying to leave an old man and save the youngins. I think that Garp's justice might have something to do with guarding the future. Kobe talks with Blackbeard about sacrificing himself for the civilians as a bargaining chip because the marines know that he is part of S.W.O.R.D. and won't want him back. Actually, you know what? Let's speed through the whole chapter. This is basically what happens. Ha ha you can't beat me. I'm an island. Naya ha ha. War har 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 har. Justice will prevail. Garp. Where do you think you're going with that wound? Tis but a scratch. What? Huh? What are you doing coming here? Galaxy Divine. I'm going to live up to his expectations. Now, I'm really mad. Psych! Flashback. I'm too weak. I will train with 200 times effort. Yeah. End of flashback. No, Kobe Senpai, don't do it. Naya ha ha ha. I'm monologuing about how you can't do anything to me. Egg, I will use the power of friendship to save them. Honesty, impact. <laughs> Kobe Senpai, you're incredible. Oh my god, I could have never seen the power of friendship prevailing. Whoa, har 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 har. Clay web or something. Yay! Everyone's on board. We only need to get Garp. Get away from Pirate Island. I'll figure something out. You kids are top priority. And never forget that you all are the future of the Marines. Whoa, har, 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 har. I hope you liked that. The end of 1088 talked about Garp missing and the rescue of Captain Kobe. Yet not only that, but also the egghead incident, which we get into 1089. I think Garp is not completely out of the running and probably captured, but I like how we got to see him laughing and smiling while he's about to die. We also don't know what happened to Perona and Gekko Moria. Are they on the ship that is escaping? Are they still on the island and about to help Garp? I guess we won't know for now. Honesty Impact was a little corny and they could have named it something different, but it makes sense for Kobe and it fits really well with him. Aokiji here seems to be reflecting on what he's doing because he left the marines to pursue his own sense of justice that he couldn't see in the marines. But now that he's killing his master who taught him everything, he's probably questioning his choices right now. In a sense, Garp is also talking to Aokiji when he says you are the future of the marines. I'll give this 7.5 bwahahas out of 10 because we get into Garp's and Kobe's relationship and how Garp thinks about what the marines mean to him and that we get to see a cool Kobe moment. Okay, now let's move on to the next chapter, chapter 1089. You guys have no idea how much this chapter was cooking. I was working on two theories right now and both of these theories have something connected to this chapter. Both of these details are very insignificantly mentioned and seen in the chapter, but matter a lot in the overall story of One Piece. That's when you know it's important. I can't wait for y'all to see those. This chapter starts off with Fusha Village. Wow, this chapter must not be that important. We see the reactions of Makino, Whoopslap, and Dadan. Kinda crazy that Luffy was just a kid in Fusha Village and now has become a Yonko. Makino's baby laughs and their laughter style is like kya ha ha, which the wiki says is a sharp arrogant laugh, commonly associated with women, such as Miss Valentine and Dellinger. Even the babies are getting laughter styles. Earthquakes and tsunamis, and I mean that in the plural form, occur causing huge damage across the whole world. Lelucia caused the water levels to rise by a whole 1 meter. This might explain how Aqua Laguna occurs and what the hole at Ennis Lobby is. But the one thing I want to point out is that the one in Ennis Lobby probably didn't erase God Valley because later the Gorosei asked York to create more Mother Flame machines, meaning that this is something new and recently created. The hole at Ennis Lobby would probably make the most sense to be formed before or during the Void Century since Vegapunk is trying to replicate this advanced technology from the ancient civilization. So this Mother Flame would probably be an imitation of whatever happened at Ennis Lobby. The panel with the giant hole also has rain unlike the Never Night Island of Ennis Lobby, so it's more plausible that Ennis Lobby was done through supernatural means like devil fruits. It's also weird that this event of the earthquakes and tsunamis happened six days after Lulisa was wiped off the map. Most islands lost their shores and some of them were completely submerged. Wow, Emu is sounding like a real right now. How about you come close proximity to me? 
People all across the Four Blues felt the aftermath of the Mother Flame. Even the Celestial Dragons and Emu were affected, referenced by the little wobbly lines around Emu. Weird places like Impel Down and Wano also felt the effects of the rumbling from the earthquake. People are definitely going to be sus about where this originated from. If it wasn't conspicuous enough, they're definitely catching on to their someone controlling the strings. Then we see the marines brought 20 warships and 30,000 marines, just for them to all later be soloed by god Usopp. Then we see Kizuru eating a bowl of ramen. Again, weird that the marines headquarters has Japanese or Wano origin, with them serving noodles to all the marines. We see this cute scene with Kizuru, Sentamaru, and Vegapunk, but now, Kizaru's enemies with Vegapunk and Sentamaru. Saint Saturn is munching on some glizzies while reading Morgan's newspaper. He mentions it's a good article because it says that the Straw Hat pirates storm Egghead to take Vegapunk hostage. I don't think anyone cares about that right now since everyone is losing their homes to a flood or panicking because of earthquakes. I guess the US government and the world government aren't too different after all. Doberman theory crafts into where the Straw Hats, Vegapunk, CP0, and the other Cypher Pole agents are located on Egghead. He even says the advance guard is Luchi, Kaku, and Stussy. But literally two seconds before, they talked about how CP0 failed their mission to assassinate Vegapunk. I think Doberman should be the one eating glizzies or making donuts with the amount of glazing coming from his mouth. The Labostratum Dome is at 100%, meaning that all its safety protocols are up with nothing coming in or out. Doberman, Doberman, Doberman. Have you ever heard of Coup de Burst? Coup de Burst, that like button to be. St. Saturn also wants to eliminate all the researchers on the ships escaping Egghead. Bro is peeing his pants right now. What is making him follow Emu so much? Is it to keep his glizzy eating hobby? Okay, I'll stop. St. Saturn calls Bonnie a little girl. It could mean to mock her, but this line might give us insight into Bonnie's age. While Rob Blucci said that they would get rid of Bonnie, St. Saturn says to leave her be. If my story reading skills are correct, it's definitely Bonnie that will give the most trouble to the marines. This panel, I don't like this panel. Doesn't seem to be a show don't tell moment, but I'll let this one slide Oda for what's about to come. The Gorosei and Kizuru with St. Saturn hear York talking to them on a transponder snail. York yells at them for trying to kill her too even after she told them about the Stella Vegapunk researching the Void Century. The Gorosei and we the readers believe everything is under the control of York, with her saying she commands the Seraphim and how she survived the night. The Gorosei talk about replicating the Mother Flame. Oh my god, how many more of those do you need? A request from whom was funny. York almost got to know who sits on the empty throne. The Gorosei don't seem to be smart in keeping Emu a secret. That's a little sus. Maybe they actually do want Emu to be known somehow. A power station or fusion reactor is also on Egghead? What does that mean? They just have a power reactor right next to them? That doesn't seem to be safe or smart. Then York asks to not lay a finger on her or the lab and to become a celestial dragon, which the Gorosei agree to. And finally, we get the reveal that the Straw Hats are actually the one in control the entire time. Let's go! Now that's some Goto level writing. Bonnie is also standing here, so maybe she got everything from Kuma's memories. This might be an indication that we won't get Kuma's memory until later when we get a flashback of what happened on Egghead. A flashback and a flashback. Still looking for that barrel. Anyways, let's talk a little bit more about this chapter. One thing that was weird in the paneling was that York's face was shown right when she started talking with the Gorosei. Her face was smiling. I thought that was weird since later in the chapter, they hit her face and then finally revealed that she was actually afraid. Maybe it's because this panel has a black background, so maybe this was a flashback of her face when she told the Gorosei about the style of Vegapunk's research on the Void Century. It's also odd that people are eating this chapter. Even the Straw Hats at the end were eating food. If two of my theories were referenced in this chapter, I wouldn't be surprised if food is definitely important. I actually analyzed food in One Piece before, and I'll make a video at some point in the future, but I'll get to that after I release these other two. So hit that subscribe button if you're interested. I'll give this chapter an 8 glizzies out of 10, because we get more lore on the effects of the Mother Flame on other countries, and the reveal that the Straw Hats got everything under control on Egghead in a single day, but definitely an 11 out of 10 for theories. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching, let Oda cook, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.